Hello, and welcome everyone to the core and school collaboration, building creative work partnerships. We are very excited to host you for this virtual conversation and hope you'll jump in and engage with your fellow attendees. Next to the video, you will see a chat and Q&A feature. Please use the chat video to message with other attendees who are watching alongside you. Also in the Q&A window, you can answer questions posted by the session presenters or direct a question to them. You'll also have access to the workshop materials on the session page. Now, Marissa will welcome our presenters for today's session. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session, Core and School Collaboration, Building Creative Work Partnerships. We are delighted to be here today to share about the opportunities for core and safe routes to school programs to partner to meet mutually beneficial goals. Our session today features past core members, core supervisors, and safe routes to school professionals. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our panel, our, the group. Nina Gardy is a mother of two and native plant enthusiast who completed her bachelor's degree in environmental management at Columbia Southern University. After leaving a career in tech, Nina shifted gears, focusing on environmental equity for underserved communities and developing eco-literacy curricula for youth and seniors. Nina served as a Climate Corps AmeriCorps Fellow working with the San Mateo County Office of Education Safe Routes to School program, where she learned about the program and fell in love with the work. During her fellowship, she co-led the Every Kid Deserves a Bike program for South San Francisco, which won the program of the year for the Silicon Valley Bike Summit. She now serves as a project specialist for Safe Routes to School Health and Wellness for San Mateo County Office of Education. Jasmine Law is a site coordinator with Transform, working with Alameda County's Safe Routes to School program. She coordinates with schools, families, and students across the region to help coordinate events and services that encourage them to take active and shared modes of transportation. She graduated from UC San Diego in 2021 and served as an AmeriCorps Fellow with San Mateo County Safe Routes to School in 2021 and 2022. Teresa Vias Kelly is the Safe Route to School Coordinator for the San Mateo County Office of Education. She is a 2017 America Walks Walking College Fellow and has worked with students, faculty, and school administrators and community partners for over two decades. She regularly brings schools, municipalities, and community members together to work on Safe Routes to School issues. Corey Johnson is the Program and Engagement Manager at Safe Routes Partnership, where she provides program technical assistance, leads trainings, develops resources, and supports the consulting work of the partnership. Corey began her career as a middle school English teacher through Teach for America before transitioning into arts management. And hi, everyone. My name is Marisa Jones. I'm the Program and Policy Director at Safe Routes Partnership where I collaborate with stakeholders across the country to pass policies that make walking and bicycling safe, convenient, and equitable. Here's our agenda for today. We will brief you on where we see this exciting opportunity for collaboration, share a deep dive into what Safe Routes to School is, offer first-person experiences of core collaborations with Safe Routes to School, and give actionable steps for how to make this happen in your community. So what is this opportunity? As CORES consider community partnerships for core member placement, we encourage you to learn about and link up with Safe Routes to School programs. CORE and Safe Routes to School partnerships can offer new funding sources, new avenues for recruiting and appealing to potential CORE members, and an evidence-based approach to making an enduring positive impact in communities. So before we dive further into this, I think it's really important to make sure that you all know what Safe Routes to School is. So I'm excited to pass it over to my colleague, Corey Johnson, who will talk to us about what Safe Routes to School is. 
Thanks, Marisa. Um, so, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our session. As Marisa mentioned, I'll give a brief overview of what Safe Routes to School is and some of the exciting ways that you can be involved in Safe Routes to School programs. Um, so, Safe Routes to School is a movement and a program make, um, that is aims to make school travel. So that includes walking, biking, scooting, uh, rolling, safe, convenient, and fun for children of all ages. And these are programs that happen um, all across the country, from small communities to uh, our biggest cities. So just a little bit about why Safe Routes to School is important in the history of the, of, you know, of this movement. Um, so back in the, you know, 50s and 60s, almost 50% of children walked or biked to school, um, whereas today only 11% of, of students are walking and biking to school. So there's been a big decrease um, in, you know, over the past decades of students who are walking and rolling to school. Um, and at the same time, you know, that family car trips make up 10 to 14 percent of morning congestion. So those long car loops in front of schools, um, you know, that's that's part of school travel today. Um, and on the safety end, we know that um, injuries, injuries and fatalities are especially high in low income neighborhoods. Um, the good news is that Safe Routes to School works. So this is an evidence-based program and, and movement showing that, um, that there can be an increase in walking and biking if there's a Safe Routes to School program. Um, programs can lead to about a 35 to 45% 40 increase to walking and rolling, and also 45 to 75% decrease in pedestrian injuries near schools. And the great thing about Safe Routes is that there are a lot of benefits to the program. Um, everything from community connectedness, so students being able to, you know, walk and roll to school with their friends and just be able to chat and have fun. Climate benefits, um, you know, having cleaner air with less car emissions and gas emissions. Um, walking and rolling is a great way to be, um, you know, to be energy efficient. Um, traffic safety benefits, like I mentioned earlier, that decrease in pedestrian and um, pedestrian and bike fatalities um, is a great benefit of Safe Routes to School. Even things like cost savings and having to spend money on gas or a large school bus fleet. So um, I feel like there's something for everyone in Safe Routes and lots of ways that you can, uh, yeah, that they can benefit the entire community. So Safe Routes to School is built on what we call the six E's framework. Um, and this is kind of like the approach that most Safe Routes to School programs take. So the six E's are engagement, equity, encouragement, engineering, education, and evaluation. So engagement is just being able to work with community members and being able to build your program based on what people in the community actually need. So what do students and teachers and families actually want from the program? The equity E is about making sure that Safe Routes School programs are benefiting um, communities that need them the most, so those communities that might not have adequate infrastructure or resources, uh, making sure that there are equitable outcomes for those students. Education is just building up that enthusiasm and encouraging, um, you know, more students to walk and roll. It's a lot of like the fun activities I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, the engineering E is about um, improving our street designs, making sure that it is um, actually safe for students to walk and roll to school. So things like um, you know, having sidewalks and crosswalks and all of those infrastructure elements that make walking and rolling both safe and also easy and convenient. Education is providing students with the skills and knowledge to walk and roll to school safely, um, making sure that people know how to ride a bike or put on a helmet or use a crosswalk. Um, all of those are part of Safe Routes to School. And then last but not least is evaluation. So checking to make sure that what you're actually doing in your program is working and using that data to adjust accordingly. So Safe Routes School programs are organized um, in a few different buckets. I usually break it down into two. Um, one is the infrastructure side. So I mentioned, you know, things like sidewalk construction, bike lanes, speed reduction, trail projects. Um, so those things where you're really actually changing the, the, the physical um, streetscape. And then we have those non-infrastructure activities, which don't necessarily include, um, you know, large inf infrastructure projects. So things like walk and roll to school day, um, which is celebrated usually in the fall every year, walking school bus programs, uh, bike train programs. So these are activities where students can organize activities, activities where students can walk and roll to school together, um, walking Wednesday programs. Um, so these are just other, you know, fun encouragement activities to, to build that walking and rolling um, spirit amongst the school community. Next slide. So a bit about how Safe Routes School programs are organized. Um, so on the local level, they start um, can start at a city, a county, um, a school, school district, even a community organization. And a program can serve either one school or multiple schools. It all depends on the structure that works for you and your community. 
on the state level, there are some programs that are supported by a state Department of Transportation, um, Health Department, and these help provide resources to the local programs. Just a bit about um, those two kind of program buckets I was talking about. As far as Safe Routes to School infrastructure projects, I just have a few um, examples of what that looks like and why that's important in the Safe Routes world. So that infrastructure engineering E matters because um, being able to walk and roll, um, you know, it's you don't want to walk and roll to school if you don't have a, a sidewalk or a protected bike lane. So that engineering piece really increases the safety and convenience and comfort of walking and rolling. Um, it also encourages parents to let their kids walk and roll to school, um, knowing that there's, you know, a safe way to get there. It also gives people different options for how to travel to school. So you don't necessarily have to, you know, take the bus or have a parent drive you. Um, you know, a student might choose to walk or bike or ride their skateboard if there's an adequate infrastructure. And as I mentioned before, this also helps to lower transportation costs, gets to get students ready to learn, um, improve social connectedness. And again, it's also an equity issue, thinking about communities that might not have that infrastructure. Safe Routes to School really helps give those communities an opportunity to get the infrastructure that they need in order to walk and roll to school. So just a few examples of what Safe Routes School infrastructure projects look like. I won't go too in-depth into these, and some of them you might see as you're walking around your own communities, things like speed humps, um, you know, high visibility crosswalks, um, you know, pedestrian crossings, raised medians, um, you know, even like your traffic signals. All of that is a part of Safe Routes to School infrastructure. Um, and then on the non-infrastructure side, we have those education and encouragement activities. So this matters because these activities really build your momentum for Safe Routes to School. They're the fun community building things people love to do, um, you know, walking to school, uh, you know, walking school bus programs, walk and roll to school day. Um, you know, so these are all programs that can, you know, both encourage walking and rolling, but can also educate people on how to do that safely. So things like bike rodeos and other um, activities to help build you know, bike, um, bike skills and pedestrian skills, those are a big part of our non-infrastructure programming. So as I mentioned earlier, these can include things like um, walk and roll to school day, which is celebrated every October, and um, bike and roll to school day, which is coming up um, in May. So an opportunity for students to um, ride to school if they wish. Um, walking school bus programs, so organized um, programs where students walk together on uh, a walking school bus route, so very similar to an actual bus route, but you're walking instead of sitting in a yellow school bus. Bike education programs, um, teaching kids how to put on helmets, how to ride bikes safely. Uh, walk audits, so actually going out and taking a, you know, a walk or, or, or a roll around your community and seeing, um, you know, what it's like, what feels safe, what doesn't feel safe, what might need to be improved or changed, and then sharing that with um, local decision makers who can help make those changes. Um, pick up and drop off programs, and even, you know, there are opportunities for you all to customize your own activity. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, an activity or program that I worked on here in Washington, D.C., um, where I live, where I partnered with a group of middle school students um, who are really concerned about um, speeding and traffic safety in their community. And so here in the district, we have something called a Vision Zero Goal, um, which is basically saying that by 2024, so by next year, which is wild to think about, that there will be no more traffic deaths or serious injuries um, on streets here in DC. Um, and that means that, you know, in order for that to really happen and come to fruition, we kind of need everybody um, to, to be a part of that and have all hands on deck. So I worked with a group of students who are really um, interested in advancing that Vision Zero Goal here in DC. So these students decided that to raise awareness about traffic safety in their community, they wanted to design um, reflective and glow-in-the-dark um, apparel and other fun accessories to get their school community talking about traffic safety. So this is a group of student entrepreneurs, they're seventh graders, who had their own student-run businesses. Um, and this was before I actually started partnering with them. I happened to come across this wonderful group of kids um, who are working on this project. And so we kind of combine forces here. And this is them actually designing their own um, reflective uh, clothing. I think they're like slide sandals here, jean jackets, all to raise awareness about um, traffic safety issues in their area, whether that be speeding, um, you know, poor lighting, at inadequate infrastructure. They wanted to really, you know, get the, get the word out there. So here are just a few more examples of students who are designing their um, 
you know, designing their apparel. They made a little hashtag called Slow Down DC to help um, promote it on social media. So they would, you know, work on this project after school, during lunch. And if you go to, to the next slide, yeah, there's the hashtag that they put. So all of their products had hashtags on them so people knew what this was connected to. And then they actually sold this gear in their school pop-up shop. Um, and again, this was a you know creative idea and a way to kind of get safe routes to school out into the wider school community. So they had a pop-up shop. Um, again, here's their apparel in the pop-up shop. And so this is a way to kind of expand that message to the entire school community. And then it culminated in a glow-in-the-dark party at the end of the year to help remind students and community members about watching out for young people who are traveling to and from school during the day. So it was a little bit of fun, but also a safety element. Um, so thinking about how you all can get involved, um, I think that that example from DC is a great way of showing what um, some you know creative ideas can look like. Um, and we you know would love to hear your uh, your creative ideas and have you infuse that into the program. Also, just offering program support, whether it's supporting a walk and roll to school day program, um, a walk and roll audit, data collection. Um, Safe Routes to School and climate justice is becoming a hot topic, so if there are any climate justice um, experts or if that's something that you're passionate about, Safe Routes to School is a great avenue to explore that area. Even content creation, helping create things for social media, promotional materials, or again, just other ideas that you might have um, about uh, how to improve safe travel for students. So I feel like Safe Routes to School programs welcome the new ideas um, and, and innovation. And if you can bring that, then you know Safe Routes is a great program for you. So that is my contact information, um, and I will leave it at that and pass it off to Jasmine Law to talk a bit about uh, Safe Routes to School in the Bay Area. Thanks, everyone. Hi, thank you, Corey. And my name is Jasmine Law, and I'm here to talk about my core member, like my core member experience, and how it led me on a path on my career. And so. Just to give you a backdrop of, of my story, I graduated college during a very dramatic time. It was during COVID and I really wanted to branch out and explore all of the things that might be related to what I studied, which was environmental science. And so I came across the Safe Route to School opportunity and it wasn't one that immediately jumped out at me, but I took the opportunity to learn um, about what they do. And I think it really appealed to me because I personally had a lot of experience growing up um, walking and taking the bus to school. Um, and when I was working with San Mateo County, I realized that not all communities have that same safe accessibility towards multiple transit options. And I soon became really passionate about transportation equity and accessibility. And what my day-to-day -day work looked like I split up the uh, Jacoba County geographically with my co-fellow Nina, and I worked on the southern half of San Mateo County with districts like San Mateo Foster City and Ravenswood School District in East Palo Alto. And I worked on a district-wide level, working with specific coordinators to provide services like bike rodeos and assemblies. And this also involved like communicating with both vendors and also with schools and getting school and district buy-in to participate in these services. And in the end, I was able to help organize 20 bike rodeos for elementary schools. Um, and also because of the COVID pandemic, we shifted a lot of our work to our virtual um, format, which, was, which allowed me and my co-fellow Nina to get really creative. Um, and um, um, create activities and do a lot of research to help improve the Safe Routes program and do a lot more virtual outreach. And so I just want to talk about some of the highlights and the key accomplishments. I helped to reboot the Golden Sneaker Contest in San Mateo County. And for all of you who don't, who might not know what that is at the moment, um, it's a school-wide competition where classrooms are competing against one another to see who has the highest participation of walking, biking, carpooling, um, and taking active and shared transportation. And, um, and I helped to get about 20 schools to participate, and the winning classroom gets a golden sneaker trophy. And we were also able to foster connection with the police department 
in to have their therapy dog, um, which whose name is Rookie, it is a golden doodle, to actually come out to schools and be an, be a bonus prize for classrooms that participated and won the competition. I also helped to support Ruby Bridges Walk to School Day. So this um, included a lot of outreach to schools and getting parent buy-in for any parents who really wanted to celebrate and encourage students to walk and roll in honor of Ruby Bridges, the activist who um, integrated her school at the age of six. I also helped lead the East Palo Alto Community Safety Assessment, and this was probably my favorite one where I got to talk to community members on the ground and talk to students and families about their lived experiences about why walking and biking might not be so accessible for them. And this included talking to them in person, but also allowing them to document their own experiences by taking a picture and uploading them through an app um, hosted by Stanford University. And we also worked on the Ruby Bridges virtual walk through history, which is a virtual escape room. And I think it's on the San Mateo County Safe Routes to School website. But Nina and I were able to work on this together, which was really fun. And it was a really great activity that classrooms were able to participate in um, to learn more about Ruby Bridges and also about pedestrian and biking safety. And what made this experience so valuable for me was just working on the ground with local communities who I might not have been able to get to know otherwise especially in East Palo Alto, where I did a lot of extensive outreach and research. And I also really loved talking with parents and students um, because their voices might not be heard all the time in terms of planning and like engineering and safety discussions. So I really like being able to hear their voice and um, hear their lived experiences as in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, and these opportunities, these experiences that I hear really brought in my own perspective into what other people are dealing with um, on their in their daily lives and how safe route to school um, integrates into that. And I also just learned a lot about myself. I learned about things that I really liked doing, which is a lot of community engagement. And I also like to learn about things that I didn't enjoy as much or just things I just liked over the other. Um, and I really just liked how passionate I feel about these issues that I'm working on, um, especially since this is my first job out of college. And I just really love how um, Safe Route to School can link to so many things, whether it's planning and policy, engineering, um, and so much more. And through my AmeriCorps experience, they were able to fund a little bit of professional development issues, which I use, which I use that time for researching urban planning, talk, like look, looking through webinars and reading books, which was really helpful in discovering myself and my career. And as a job pipeline for me, currently I work with Alameda County Safe Route to Schools, which is just right across the bay from San Mateo County. And before my service, I didn't realize um, what Safe Route to School was, although I had participated in Safe Routes activities as a elementary schooler, actually. But again, I just want to emphasize how Safe Routes connects to so many fields, whether it's policy, public health, engineering, urban planning. And I just love being exposed to so many different people, whether it's city staff or whether it's local agencies and also community partners. And I really just love having that option of having so many people and building a network of professionals to learn so much more from. And also a fun fact, to implement the Golden Sneaker Contest, I worked with other Safe Routes to School programs in the Bay Area, particularly the Alameda County Safe Routes to School program where I work now. And I was able to do research on the Golden Sneaker Contest and also um, gaining resources from, from them in order to implement the Golden Sneaker Contest in San Mateo County. And it was a really valuable networking experience. And I it was really great to connect with people who would become my future colleagues or current colleagues now. And my advice to marketing this opportunity to a new generation would be to especially highlight the professional development that could come out of this. 
and also like highlighting the exposure to various different types of fields. Um, because although I'm really interested in urban planning, there could be a lot of other people who are interested in tackling the safe route to school angle from a public health perspective or from a engineering perspective or from a policy perspective. And it's just great to branch out and establishing a professional network um, among many different groups of people. And also highlighting community partnerships and working on the ground with local communities like I did in East Palo Alto. Um, and to also highlight how much, like how much help you're giving the community that is in need. And also an advertising supportive resources for core members, such as things like affordable housing or affordable um, food services, because we know that one of the drawbacks to um, core members might be the cost, especially if they're coming right out of um, an undergrad education or a college education like I was. And next, I want to hand it over to Nina Gardi to talk about um, her experience as a core member. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Jasmine. It is so great to be collaborating with you again. I had such a great time being your colleague. And that's one thing I love about the Safe Routes world is that it's very collaborative and very connected. And you just feel it throughout everything um, that you do. So my name is Nina. I am currently the project specialist for health and wellness for the Safe Routes to School program for San Mateo County Office of Education. Every time I say it, it's a mouthful and it never, um, it does get easier though, as time goes by. So I'm here today to talk about my experience, how I transitioned from a different career, got into Safe Routes um, through my experience as a Climate Corps AmeriCorps member and just the ins and outs of what I learned through my experience. Next slide. All right, so a little bit about myself is I used to work in tech. Um, it didn't feel fulfilling. And you know, that's something that may be scary for a lot of people doing a career change. Um, but for me, what attracted me to the Climate Corps AmeriCorps experience was that I was able to have extra support a network of people who are also building their professional career and development. And that really attracted me because I knew me entering into something new, something different, I was gonna have that support. I was gonna have people who were there to help me um, as I was navigating a new field and building new skills. So um, what really attracted me to the Safe Routes program was that there was community development that involved with it. And also the world, like Safe Routes is just so many different things. Um, we work on transportation related issues and it's all interconnected. It's related to climate justice. It's related to equity issues. And that is something that really attracted me because I'm someone who likes to think holistically about everything. Um, so being able to touch different fields and different perspectives um, in this position was something that made me feel like, okay, I can do it, I can add value and I can, I can make action happen. Um, so, you know, through that experience, like I mentioned, I was able to gain different skills that helped me um, advance my career and also just really help shift my perspective and gain new perspective um, and that's something that I think the Safe Routes World for. Next slide. So um, the appeal of this position really came from that focus on sustainability. I always had a passion for climate justice. When I did first switch careers, I worked a little bit in habitat restoration. Um, and then, you know, something about that I've learned just through my own experiences is that it can be difficult to get into um, green jobs. Um, there are so many different niches and there are so many different um, different career choices and options. It may be hard at first to really nail down what you like to do. And what's great about having this AmeriCorps experience is that you're able to explore these different skills and really explore these different options and meet different people that can help you realize what is it you want to do. 
And that's something that really spoke to me was I knew I cared about sustainability. I knew I cared about environmental justice and I knew I cared about my community. And it was like, what is it I focus on? So through this experience, I was able to really figure that out. Um, one thing that's really awesome about Safe Routes is that you focus on community. Um, this is very, this is just a very great program that focuses on really everybody thinking about it. We are all road users, whether we're walking, whether we're driving, whether we're taking the bus, everyone is a road user in some way, in some format. So it's really great that we get to touch different points and really help many different people in our community um, and hit these different disparities that we find with transportation. So when I did the research on this um, position, I realized it was at San Mateo County Office of Education. Um, something about me, I was always interested about how public agencies do things. I, I was always curious like about the back end of how policies get, how do they go live? Um, you know, what is the outreach? Like who works on what? And it was just so interesting and captivating to see how many different types of fields, how many different types of people, inter, um, interdisciplinaries are, are in the safe routes world. Um, you know, we worked with engineers, we worked with teachers, we worked with parents, transportation planners, we worked with policy planners, and it's just amazing to see like how 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 complex it is um when whether it was an infrastructure project and there was a recommendation to implement you know a flashing beacon there's a lot that goes into it it's really not that easy it's not you know it's not a straight path to saying hey yeah we're gonna add this new thing here there takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of planning and decision making to go into it. And um, it's something that I didn't know. And it was a very interesting experience to be a part of it and learn from it. Um, so that was something that really made me make the switch that said, hey, I, I can find my place in doing this. I'm learning so much from different people. And I find the work interesting, just because it hit my passion on sustainability and community. So from there, you know, I was just able to really just kind of break ground and just explore. And that's something I really appreciate about this experience is that I was able to have that space to explore and to learn and to network. Next slide. All right, so a little bit about my day to day. I was the Office of Traffic Safety Fellow so I managed one of our big grants that the Safe Routes to School program has. Um, that grant comes through the California Office of Traffic Safety. So um, I really worked on just day-to-day -day operations, um, event planning, um, supporting schools with Safe Routes to School campaigns, educational activities, creating traffic safety kits, making sure they go out to the right people, um, creating curriculum, working on our newsletter. So I did a lot of different things. And what was nice about that was I felt like my supervisor, Teresa and Vanessa, they really took into consideration what I was interested in and they paid attention to what I was good at. They paid attention to also what some of my growth areas were. So I was really able to just do a lot in that short period of time. It goes by really fast. Um, the fellowship was around 11 months, and I'm telling you, it goes by super fast. And as you know, in Safe Routes, we plan ahead of time all the time. We're planning for spring in the fall. We're planning for summer in the winter. So a lot of planning has to be, has to happen. And a lot of that goes into time management. So um I was really able to gain different skills and gain management skills that I knew I wanted to I wanted to fix and and evolve. So I was able to do that through this experience. And I want to talk about a couple projects that I worked on. Um, so one of the projects is the Every Kid Deserves a Bike program. This was um, 
This was something I co-led with the city of South San Francisco. So yeah, another big part of my job too is we work with the different municipalities. We work with a bunch of different cities within the county and every city has its own set of specialties and it everyone is different. So every city has its own, you know, has its own transportation challenges that they face. And it's really important to pay attention to that. So the job never gets boring because there's always something different. But um, in essence, what this program did was provide 150 free bicycles to two 10 Title I schools. Um, so this was all about having more equitable transportation opportunities for students. Um, this was also about creating and cultivating a bike culture, along with um, getting kids to be more active and healthy, and also building confidence. Um, you know, this was a great way for the city of South San Francisco to connect with its community, you know, by giving out a bicycle to students who need it, um, who are typically walking to school or in the car. And this is also another way for the city to see that, hey, we're going to have an increase of bicycle users. We're going to need additional bike lanes. So it goes hand in hand. We do these non-infrastructure related activities and it can lead to infrastructure changes, which sometimes take a long time. Um, and then my, my main role in that was to do outreach, was to provide resources, um, was to build partnerships for the city of South San Francisco to have, um, to have uh, bike rodeos. And then we also partnered with Bike Mobile, who did uh, bike repair and also did bike inspections and helped us with technical assistance that we needed to make sure the bicycles were um, ready and they were safe when we gave them out to the students. This was a really fun experience. Um, they are actually doing it again this year. So it is great to see that this program has evolved. And then um, something else I did was um, work on the Safe Route to School newsletter. And this was really fun because I got to work with um, content creation, which I had a little bit of experience in, but I definitely wanted to um, evolve my skill set again and, um, and use different multimedia tools. So I was able to do that. Um, some of the things I did was create posters. I created educational materials, um, promote events, and um, really just tried to do different things and explore different um, materials that can help increase the number of readers that we have. And um, also to expand our message. So something I wanted to do was I noticed that there was a need for having more representation of our community members. So um, I, I tied that to um, different like national holidays that we have, like uh, Black History Month, AAPI Month, um, Women's History Month, uh, Pride Month. So I took those opportunities, I took those holidays that we all know of. And I said, hey, let's create a newsletter um, in a safe routes trans transportation equity lens. So we did that for the first time. And we got to highlight leaders um, of these different groups, which is we don't see it very often. Um, you know, transportation is is we mostly see like white cis men leading it. But really, there's there's so many different people. There's a whole, you know, diversity lens that we can really view transportation in. So that was something that I got to do um, and really just help expand our message to be more representative our, of our community. And then um, I want to talk about um, the Our Voice Geocache Art Walk. <clears throat> So this is something um, that we do. We partner with Stanford Our Voice. Um, they are a citizen science based um, organization and they create this application where you can go out, take pictures of areas of concern specifically for traffic safety. 
And what they do is collect all this data and then we can use it for summarizing reports and also for learning about what we can do to improve the quality of safety in a specific area. So we created a um, inspired by Jasmine. And also there's a picture of Jasmine there um, doing helmet fitting at the art walk. So what we did here was um, we created a map and we looked at landmarks that were near areas of concern for the city of Half Moon Bay. And what we did was we led a walk of, um, it was about 20 community members, which was a really great turnout for the first time doing this. And what we did was um, basically go on this art walk where we looked at these landmarks. We used the landmarks as um, like our geocaching tags and then what we did was we would observe that area for a couple minutes, talk about it as a group, and then we would use the Our Voice application to collect our data. And then from there, we were able to summarize a report that the city of Half Moon Bay could use and just get you know public opinion about what needs to be safer. So this is a great way to connect community members to public agency in a way that was fun, in a way that was engaging. And, um, you know, we were, we able, we gave prizes as well. So just thinking about how do I get communities engaged? You want to bring value to them. So prizes help. Um, we also brought a lot of safety gear with us. So one was the helmets and also reflective gear. Next slide. All right. So, yeah, just in essence, um, this this experience can can serve as a um, job pipeline because you are able to navigate so many different fields and meet different people that can really help you with your own professional career development. Um, and then one thing about safe routes is that. There are just so many different people involved and you can really learn from them and just meet different people, I think is a key part of it is um, all like it's just a good networking experience. Um, and then being able to work on infrastructure and non infrastructure projects is good, too, because you can kind of hone in on. Do you like to be more technical? Do you like to work on more of your hard skills or are you more into project management and outreach communications. So you get to see different sides of things and gain different skills that can really help you with your next job hunt. Next slide. And um, just a word of advice too um, for marketing to a new generation. So now that I'm in a position where I also now manage fellows, um, we, I had to also think about outreach too. like what will attract someone to this position. So I think it's really good to use keywords that are meaningful to the times, meaningful to what people care about. Um, you know, something that I noticed was when the job description used the job title, safe route to school fellow. Um, it didn't get, get as many hits. And that's just because many, you know, someone may not know exactly what Safe Routes to School is just yet. So um, there was a change to the title and we put Transportation Equity Fellow and um, it did get more hits, right? We got a bit more job applications. And I think it's just because that the word, you know, Transportation Equity, it, it's just a bit more not catchier, but it um, it speaks to more to more people um, because and then you tie it to safe routes to school. So I think it just gives more of the message of what you are looking for. Um, and then I also think equity has become really important for a lot of people. And I think a lot of young people want to explore what that what that means and how can they support um, 
people who want to build more equitable communities, right? So using those keywords that can really help frame what safe routes is, I think is good. Um, and yeah, so just to my point there, it may not be commonly searched for. So, you know, when you are doing your job search, you know, not everybody's looking at a specific organization. Um, so that's just something to think about. And then um, I think also what helped me be successful and also Jasmine is that we got to explore and be creative. Um, you know, our supervisors, they they talked with us, they gave us a good outline of what needed to get done, but we also had that, we also had space. We had a safe environment to explore our interests at the same time. And then also, I think what was helpful is that we were given an environment. So really creating an environment where it feels safe to ask questions is good, is key. Um, and I think it will help, you know, fellows feel like, okay, if I can ask a question, if I can explore, hey, here's what I'm observing. Um, it brings in new ideas and room for new projects. So I think that's really important to have is have that workspace culture where you can feel safe to ask questions and to to voice your opinion because typically when you're in an entry level job you know just just thinking about it you may feel more timid to ask because you're like oh i'm new should i ask you know is it right for me so i think that's really important is to really create that space that create that space of safety for communication and transparency and then also invest in their interests, like always, you know, get like one thing I like to do when I met my new fellows this year, I like to ask, what's your learning style? Because we all have different learning styles. And, you know, I could give you a list of what to do, but it may not be your style. And you, you know, it's just going to go right over your head. So are you more hands on, you know, it, are you more of an audio learner? So I think getting to really know your fellows learning style, learning their interest, you know, what is it you want to get out of it? Like, what is it about this job that speaks to you? What do you want to explore more of? How can I help you grow? Really cultivating that type of environment is going to make the experience more meaningful. And also, you're going to just get more work productivity um, out of the whole team. So that's something I've learned. And I'm very thankful for what I've learned. All right, next slide. And now I will turn it over to Teresa Vias Kelly. Thank you. Thanks, Nina. So I've been the Safe Routes to School Coordinator at the San Mateo County Office of Education since 2015. And we've been hosting AmeriCorps Fellows since 2018. And I had the pleasure of hosting Jasmine and Nina during the 21-22 school year, um, which was their AmeriCorps fellow year. So back in 2017, the County Office of Education Safe Routes to School program collaborated on a public um, with the public health um, system in San Mateo County on a report called Creating Safer Streets Near Schools, which highlighted schools in equity priority communities that were near unsafe intersections. So we use that report to apply for a grant from the California Office of Traffic Safety. And um, we, we were wondering, like, this is great. Like, if we get this grant, that'll be awesome. We can focus on these schools. But who's going to manage the, the program? So our Environmental Literacy and Sustainability Coordinator at the time was hosting AmeriCorps Fellows. And she gave us the idea to have a Climate Corps AmeriCorps Fellow help manage the OTS grant. So we collaborated with the Bay Area Community Resources. We wrote the um, a fellow into the grant and we were awarded the grant and have been awarded it every year since and have had fellows that have worked um, on this grant every year. So the fellow works with 10 equity priority communities. Um, and in recent years, our main funder for Safe Routes to School, which is our county's congestion management agency, they, um, offered to cover the fee so we could have two fellows. So the last three years, we've had two fellows. One manages our the OTS grant, and the other one supports schools that don't have the capacity to manage their own Safe Routes to School program. Next slide, please. 
So the benefits to us for hosting AmeriCorps Fellows are um, more staffing. Um, for instance, our the first time we had two fellows, um, our fellow, the one that was not working on officer traffic safety, she was able to work with one of our uh, one of our most under-resourced communities in the county. And in that one year that she worked with them, she did more for that community in, with safe routes that had been done in a really long time, because even though that community had a safe routes grant, they didn't really have the capacity to manage it. So she was able to work with them to um, coordinate a lot of different safe routes to school activities which Jasmine took over when she came on last year. And she also took on another district that also was having a hard time managing their grant. And I'm really happy to say, because this hardly ever happens, we give out grants every year to schools and districts. They don't always spend all of their funding, but under Jasmine's leadership, um, and coordination skills, both communities were able to spend all of their funding and bring a lot of safe routes to school activities to um, the schools, to the students in their schools. Another benefit to hosting safe routes, um, sorry, okay, scratch. Another benefit to hosting AmeriCorps Fellows is new ideas, um, lots of creativity, uh, for instance, our fellows have created virtual escape rooms during the pandemic. We were trying to figure out how do we reach out to students, you know, when they're learning from home. So our fellows created virtual escape rooms that taught pedestrian and bicycle safety. Um, one of them was a Star Wars theme escape room that was really popular and we actually got traction across the country from it. Um, Crossing Guard Appreciation Week. Last year, Jasmine and Nina, we've been wanting to do that for a long time, and they created Crossing Guard Appreciation Week, which was really well received by districts across our county. Safe routes to anywhere for anyone. Um, as part of the Office of Traffic Safety Grant, we have to focus on two, two um, populations. So one is students, obviously, and the others is senior citizens. And so Nina was able to work with um, some senior centers in the area and bring some pedestrian and bicycle education to senior citizens. And then um, Jasmine already referenced this, but our golden sneaker contest was kind of like a fun thing for schools to do if they wanted to do, but we didn't really do a lot of promotion around it until Jasmine took over last year and really promoted it. And we had a really good um, really good turnout for Golden Sneaker Award and had schools across the county participate. And then uh, Jasmine was able to collaborate with one of our police departments who has a Golden Doodle therapy dog. So winners of the Golden Sneaker Contest, we held a raffle um, for any school that participated. They got a visit from Rookie the Golden Doodle for the Golden Sneaker, so that was fun. Um, another benefit is just the opportunity to help new professionals with professional development and professional growth. Some of our fellows in the past have gone into um, onto law school, um, environmental work, working with children, and they're doing this all through the lens being informed by their year with AmeriCorps. So they're being they're doing this with that that those experiences they had with Safe Routes to School and with AmeriCorps, and they're bringing that into whatever field they decide to go into. Um, and we, my partner and I last year, Vanessa Castro, we were very happy when Jasmine and Nina decided that they wanted to continue with Safe Routes to School. And it's really fun to work with them now as professionals in the Safe Routes to School field. Next slide. So how we marketed this opportunity to potential core members. So we um, used our San Mateo County Office of Education Safe Routes to School newsletter. We also used our um, County Office of Education social media networks. We worked with our public health department, Get Healthy San Mateo County, um, and they, they marketed it through their newsletter also word of mouth and also individual invitations. So we would reach out to people that we thought might be interested in being an AmeriCorps fellow um, and send them the information and invite them to participate. Next slide, please. So some tips for uh, core members, for, for all of you who are interested in pursuing this opportunity. So the first one is start recruitment early because it takes a while and there will be 
a lot of um, applicants that you will need to sort through and interview. And it's a good idea to interview all the applicants and then make your decision. Um, also, if your agency is not able to afford a fellow on their own, um, consider sharing with another agency. So for instance, this year, we are sharing a, one of our fellows with the city of South San Francisco, and that fellow is working primarily on the Every Kid Deserves a Bike program and also bringing Safe Routes to School activities into the schools in that school district in that city. Um, a couple years ago, we shared a fellow with our Environmental Literacy Sustainability Program, and that, they sh that fellow worked for the same agency, but got to experience two different programs and two different supervision styles, which I think was really valuable for that, for that fellow. Um, sorry, you're going to have to cut this in a second because I can't see the slide and I'm going to go on. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, one thing that you want to make sure is that you have space for the fellows and the capacity to support them. So make sure that you treat them like they're regular employees. They're not interns, they're not volunteers, they're, they're employees and they're new professionals. So you have to have time for them. So plan a few days of onboarding them to the agency and the program. Make sure they have a really clear scope of work. So for instance, for Nina, who was working on the Office of Traffic Safety Grant, we made sure she had a copy of the grant and a copy of the budget. So she, she knew what, she was, what, what her tasks were that she needed to complete. Um, take the fellows on a tour of the area they'll be working in so that they can be familiar with the different areas of the, so for in our case, the different areas of the county so that they know like where the schools are, what the, you know, what the, just what the community looks like. I think that's really helpful. Um, plan something fun for them to do when they first start. So this year we had our fellows start in October and so I introduced them to the schools they were going to be working with and with the idea of like they can go to your Halloween parades and they can pass out reflective items for the students to wear, you know, when they're out trick or treating. So that was a really fun way to introduce them to the schools and to get them involved right away. Make sure that you have time in your schedule to for formal check ins with your fellow and be available if they just drop in when they when they have a question because they'll drop in a lot to ask questions. And if you don't have um, if you have more than one fellow, it's a good idea to have another colleague supervise the other fellow so that you're not supervising both of the fellows. If you um, oh, always pass along opportunities for professional development and networking. So like for it, for instance, in my agency, we have a lot of opportunities for professional development and outside of the Safe Routes to School world, because we I work for the County Office of Education. So I always invite the fellows to, you know, go learn about mental health or go learn about, um, I don't know, school um, safety just because it's it's all connected. So it's a good idea. And it also gives them the opportunity for networking and for learning different areas of um, the world of education. Make sure they have their own desk space. So again, they're not volunteers, they're not interns, they need to have their own desk, they need to have their own phone, their own computer, their own email address. Um, if you're if your agency does business cards, get them business cards as well. This is all important in just helping them with this first professional experience and also in just helping them feel like they're really part of the agency. And that includes making sure they're part of their agency listserv. Um, a lot of times for my agency, emails go out to everyone. And I, you know, I always ask the fellows, did you get this email to make sure that they're on the listserv? And if they're not, to to talk to the person in charge and get them on that. And then make sure that they're included in all department and agency functions. So anything that happens, because my direct supervisor, she is she doesn't directly supervise the fellows. So sometimes she forgets that they're, you know, they're there um, because we have a hybrid situation with our fellows. So they're not always on site. Um, so I always make sure I pass along things that we are doing as a department. Like maybe we're 
celebrating someone's birthday or we're all going to go out for happy hour. Just, you know, make sure you always invite your fellows to those things as well. And then as Nina was saying, give them the opportunity to be creative because honestly, they're like, as a supervisor, I feel sometimes so bogged down by like just the things that I need to get done, like reports I need to write or, you know, things that I need to do for our funder that it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for creativity. So it's really nice to have the fellows there who have all these really great creative ideas and to talk through those with them and give them that opportunity. Next slide. All right, so now I'm going to pass it back to Marisa. Thanks so much, Teresa. And thank you, Jasmine and Nina for sharing your first person experiences as core members working on safe routes to school. Thank you, Teresa, for sharing your experience supervising core members. Um, and Corey, thanks so much for making sure everybody in this presentation um, feels up to speed on what safe routes to school is and what the opportunity is. I hope that you are all feeling so inspired to pursue partnerships with local safe routes to school programs where you're located. And so we want to take some time now to equip you with the information that you need to know to begin forging those partnerships. As you've heard throughout this presentation, safe routes to school programs can serve as hosts or sites for core member service. Um, this can be a full-time opportunity, like what Jasmine and Nina described, really working as the Safe Route to School coordinator. Or as Teresa touched on, it can also be a shared role. You could, a, a core member could serve um, in, a, in a more discreet role or for a, fine, a, a fixed number of hours, working on Safe Route to School and be shared with another agency. Um, and there are some of these more limited opportunities within Safe Routes to School programs, like walking school bus leaders, which is something Corey talked about in her presentation. That's like basically a carpool, but for kids and, and caregivers to be walking and, and um, using core members to lead those walking school buses. Um, we've also seen core members work on Safe Routes to School to help manage traffic flow at school arrival and dismissal, which is um, one of the most unsafe times for kids walking. Um, and one of the other things we recognize that is very important to core members as part of their service um, is to get that mentorship and get those professional development opportunities. As we heard from both Nina and Jasmine, that was part of the appeal of their service year. And that's one of the things that Teresa, as their supervisor, has really prioritized. So I wanted to share that in addition to amazing supervisors and national innovators like Teresa in San Mateo County, the Safe Routes to School network is very broad all across the country. And we have a very robust and active um, community of Safe Routes to School practitioners, providers, parents, who really help each other out that can help support your core members um, and provide some of that additional mentorship and networking. Um, and one of the ways that we do that is through a listserv. And I know you're probably rolling your eyes like, oh my God, listservs. But the Save Roads to School listserv is actually so friendly and fun. And people are constantly putting out questions for one another, providing advice and guidance and um, we love getting to see the relationships that get formed through that. And so Safe Routes to School, because it is this known quantity, this um, established program, it can, it can be a way for your core members to plug into um, a national network and, and additional membership, mentorship, excuse me. So we've talked at great length about this. There are so many things that core members working on Safe Routes to School um, have the opportunity to work on. I won't go into this in detail because our colleagues um, went through this really well, but one of the really nice appeals of working on Safe Routes to School through core services is the exposure to so many different sectors, engineering, public policy, education, planning, community engagement, um, and 
as we've heard from our partners in, in San Mateo County, there's so much local innovation that happens um, and really getting to see core members at the cutting edge of that is so exciting. Um, there are so many ways that partnering with Safe Routes to School programs can broaden the appeal of core service. And I think that both Nina and Jasmine hit on this so clearly that it provides this opportunity for exposure to multiple sectors and career opportunities. And as Corey talked about, Safe Routes to School it has been rigorously evaluated to show efficacy, efficiency efficacy um, at reducing childhood injury um, and fatality from traffic violence, and also to help get kids moving, increase academic performance. We know that core members want to be part of something meaningful, and Safe Routes to School has been rigorously evaluated to be impactful. Um, and so there's this great opportunity for core members to plug into something that's going to make a positive impact in their, in their communities. I know the question on many of your minds probably relates to funding. So I want to talk a little bit about um, opportunities for funding related to Safe Routes to School and core service. Um, so Safe Routes to School programs are generally funded using federal transportation dollars. And Safe Routes to School coordinators, like what core members could be serving as, are eligible uses of these funds which if you as core as cores um, establish partnerships with safe routes to school programs or connect with cities, schools or school districts to establish new partnerships where core members could serve as safe routes to school coordinators, it opens up a new source of funding for some of those core positions. And I think Teresa touched on that really nicely. They have this grant through the California Office of Traffic Safety and are able to use that to fund the core member position. We also know that there are benefits to schools and to Safe Routes to School programs for working with core members. Um, you're, they're able to use investment in cores toward the local match required for that federal funding. Um, and in some states, connections with cores or employing core members um, as Safe Routes to School coordinators or as part of their um, program helps to make their funding application more competitive. So we see this mutually beneficial relationship between cores, core members, and Safe Routes to School programs. Um, if you are interested in exploring this opportunity further, there are a handful of ways to get started. Um, I have linked here, and we will make sure that this goes out with our presentation materials, to a map of local Safe Routes to School programs. So you can go ahead and look at that map and see like, oh, okay, I live, I live in Philadelphia. Look, there's our Safe Routes Philly program. Let me reach out to to them and see what's going on. And actually, just before this presentation, I saw they just posted a job announcement for um, an AmeriCorps Vista to work on Safe Routes Philly. So very exciting. Um, there are also Safe Routes to School coordinators within most state departments of transportation. And I've linked here to the contact information. So reaching out to them and expressing interest in establishing a partnership with Safe Routes to School programs. Um, there are also opportunities if there's not an established program yet in your community. We know that oftentimes staffing feels like one of the barriers, and I think even Teresa talked about that. There are some schools and districts in their area that um, are interested in Safe Routes to School programming but don't have the staffing to um, implement the program, and so the different um, core members have been able to do that. And so reaching out to local bicycle and pedestrian groups, um, YMCAs have often been involved in Safe Routes to School or expressed interest in them, as well as what we call here PTAs, but school parent um, associations to find out, is there interest in this? Is this an opportunity, opportunity that we could pursue jointly? And we also encourage you to reach out directly to city transportation agencies and school districts. Um, and also, we are super happy to help play matchmaker. We know 
a lot of the times like which bike ped groups or Ys or PTAs are interested in safe routes to school, but haven't quite been able to get it off the ground yet. And oftentimes, again, it's staffing that's the barrier. So my contact information is here. We are so happy to help play matchmaker between cores and potential safe routes to school programs. Um, we so appreciate you taking the time to learn more about this opportunity. We hope that through learning about Safe Routes to School, you are able to take advantage of this opportunity to attract new core members, diversify your funding, and build community where you work and serve. Um, thank you so much, and I will hand it back over to Lauren to close us out. I would like to give a big thank you to Marissa and the other presenters today. Thank you so much. As a reminder, this session and the materials will be available for the remainder of the conference. The Q&A will remain open as well. So feel free to post your questions to the presenters or TCN staff. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time at CoreCon 2023.